guys, I am here to do a book review on Arthur the Steeing Stone by Kevin Crossley Holland. This is a uh, children's story, milk, I think mainly it would be uh, a YA or youngish middle grade book, I guess. It, it can't, sometimes crosses between. Uh, as always, I'm going to read you the synopsis. It says, Set in the wealth marches in the year 1199, the Seeing Stone is a uniquely contemporary take on the Arthurian legends. It is an enthralling story of secrets and mysteries in the life of young Arthur de Caladoc, who discovers his namesake, the boy King Arthur, in the Seeing Stone. In a hundred short chapters that seem like snapshots of the past, the Seeing Stone brilliantly evokes the earthly, uncomplicated uncomfortable sorry reality of daily life in the middle ages and of a whole community from gaddy the reeve's daughter to tan on a chamber servant from oliver the priest to lady ellis keeper of a terrible secret facing the conflicts and uncertainties of a new country the seeing stone is the first volume in the arthur trilogy sorry about that so this book has 324 pages and I really really enjoyed this I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it a 4 and I'm going to put it aside so I can talk about it so this is a cover as a cover I've always been intrigued with this I love the um, sort of ancient uh, what would you say paintings here and you can tell like with the um, artwork there to it's kind of like a, I can't focus the camera very well but I've always been fascinated with this cover and I think it's very beautiful and it and it, it um it really denotes I guess what the story is about and it reminds me of something I was learning in writing class today but I won't go into that too much it just reminded me of it when I looked at it so that's the cover and as it says it is written in a hundred chapters some spanning between five pages six pages and some just two some one so it is a quick read depending on um like your reading style i guess for me it wasn't such a quick read because i wanted to absorb it a lot more uh, it a lot happens. It's very full of conflict, which I liked about it. And like nearly every second chapter is conflict, and yeah, and it, and it is brilliant. So I'm just gonna go into the things that I noted down while I was reading it, and hopefully give you a good review. So in this book, uh, obviously you follow the journey of Arthur and his family in their manner and I haven't read this book for a long time and I wasn't exactly sure how I would take to it and I took to it quite well it Kevin seems to very much stick to the uh, lifestyle I guess you can say of the times and uh, I was gonna, I'm actually going to read your quote because this pretty much sums up exactly what I felt about it when I was reading it. It said, This is astonishing. A book that lasts has to create a world so real that you can run your fingertips over the walls, feel its morning frostbite at your throat, and remember the people who lived there for a lifetime. Crossley Holland has done it, and I am so, so jealous. And fine, children's Lorette. And just that whole you can run your fingers over the walls that's exactly how I felt I was in bed reading it and all I wanted to do was be in front of a fireplace or with my family and the characters just feel so real like I felt like I was there he writes it so beautifully and wonderfully and provokingly that it takes you right into the world and you feel like you're standing on that hill when he's when Arthur's standing on it you feel the pain that goes through the village 
you know, when things happen to them, you feel the close knitness of the community that is really, it rarely exists anymore. Like in in my culture, or in my area rather, community, does not you don't see that great. It it's just the world is so populated. I guess it's so consumer like it's consumers and things like that. You just forget that that's what the world was like. I, and I forgot that phones existed and I forgot the internet existed and sometimes like you reflect that when you read it and I think that's what made me like it even more. I reflected on the simple things in life, how running around with your friends and that childhood that seems so that, that it is lacking these days is portrayed so beautifully in this novel. Um, so the sensory details and the um, atmospheric descriptions were just very rich for me. They were very rich. Uh, the characters. Now, at times I fell out of sync with Arthur and this is my greatest dislike about the book is that sometimes when he was writing the chapters or series of events just felt a little bit out of sync for me and I had to whirl myself back in and it was usually when he was looking into the stone um, obviously there is a stone a seeing stone so there's no spoilers there so that was pretty much the only thing I didn't like and that made it hard sometimes to connect with Arthur but not very often. Uh, I really loved his family. I think each of them had a very distinct voice. Every character in the book had a very distinct voice and I felt myself feeling a lot for the other people around the manor. Um, that weren't in his family because back in those days he was considered quite rich yet um, his friends were not and he wasn't exactly allowed to hang around with certain people and that kind of really pissed me off but I liked seeing his character progress through his life and I guess you could say the supernatural or the seeing foreseeing elements of the stone um, and how they combined together the ending wasn't exactly what I expected when it came to that but it was really really great I actually really enjoyed it uh, about halfway through I was like yeah I have to read this and there were some points um, when I wanted to go to sleep I was really tired and I wanted to know what was actually happening to stone there were parts when I actually got more absorbed in his you know, foreseeing or future life than in his real life and but Kevin brought me back into the story very very quickly and I never lingered in like I never lingered around it's hard to describe books isn't it okay so I'm gonna stop talking about the characters but the characters are very good diverse brilliant I love Gatty she is so cute um and Grace, I really felt sorry for Arthur, oh, we'll just say that. I won't spoil any more. Uh, mythology. I'm going to have to make note of something I learnt today as well because I was learning about um, Arthurian times in my writing class today, only briefly. And... I think it's a really great glimpse on what relationships were like back then to what they are now and how much it has progressed from, uh, you know, the Middle Ages and all medieval times to what it is now and what we've taken from that kind of marriage and faith and it was really interesting and it was I liked that Arthur was a different character. He was individual. He knew what he knew what was expected of him, but he still tried to overstep everyone else's ideals of what he should be or how he should act around women or everything like that. He was a gentleman really. 
he was he was very cute at times um, and I really liked learning about his romantic interactions or just relationships in general um, with the people around him and his cousin Grace and I also liked learning about the adult relationships and how they really connect with relationships nowadays. Not much has really changed in some cases though now women actually have a lot more um, say equal rights and things like that. There is a death in the book that I won't go into too much detail about but made me cry. I was teary. It felt sad and things like that you make that make you realize that we are very very fortunate to have the medicine and technology and things that we have today um, but still but the yeah the mythology side of romance was really insightful and I really enjoyed just looking at different relationships and aspects of relationships back then and comparing them to now inside my head and what I'm learning Oh my god, this review is going forever. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's, I hope I haven't gone into too much plot detail, but I thought that I'd try and pinpoint some of the things that I really liked and disliked about this novel without going on forever. Uh, and yeah, I really find it hard to articulate, articulate anything when it comes to reviews. I have it all up here and it sounds perfectly fine until it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm guessing a lot of people have this issue at some point or another. But um, yeah. So definitely go and pick it up. Uh, of course it's the first book in the series. So you don't really get to learn a completely great deal about Arthur. But his progress is um, very forward and... I really enjoyed it. I'm going to pick up the next one maybe in a couple of weeks, if not next year. And yeah. So this is my review on The Seeing Stone by Kevin Crossley Holland. And I hope you enjoyed my review. And thank you for watching.